What's up, everybody? Welcome to the FanDuel Hurry Up. I am Brian Fonseca, and today we are going to be talking about post-All-Star break breakout candidates in the NBA. We have three of them. First, Bam Adebayo, center for the Miami Heat, and he is somebody who has been on a tear recently. His last eight games, you've seen the offensive aggression increase, 18 field goal attempts now, six free throw attempts per game, about 22 points, 11 rebounds, three assists, two steals, and a block. When Kyle Lowry is out there, Bam Adebayo is more aggressive. You should expect to continue to see him be more aggressive even when the team is at full strength, which they're expected to be at soon because Tyler Hero, Victor Oladipo, and Markeith Morris are all on their way back. But right now, Bam Adebayo has been on the tear. And even on nights where he doesn't have it offensively and is struggling a little bit from the field and is not quite getting to the line and is not quite being aggressive because it still has to be proven to be a night-to-night thing, he can fill up the stat sheet in other ways. And he's averaging about 40 FanDuel points per game, which is up in his last eight games. Expect that to continue. Next up, we have Tyrese Halliburton of the Indiana Pacers, who was acquired by the Sacramento Kings at the trade deadline. Over 35 FanDuel points per game this season, about 45 with the Pacers. Now, that's a big jump, and the sample size is very small. It's only four games. But the usage rating has increased from 18 till about 22. The points are up from 14 to 21. The assists are up from 7.5 to 11. Tyrese Halliburton basically has the green light. The keys to this Indiana Pacers offense, they are very invested in him, having traded the Monta Sabonis, their previous best player, to acquire him. They're very invested in seeing him run this offense, seeing what he can do so that it gives them an idea of what to do in the offseason. But Tyrese Halliburton is also famously efficient. So with that increased usage, he may not always get 16 assists like he already has with the Pacers once, but he's somebody who could put up big stat lines before the end of the season. And last but not least, we have in Washington, Kyle Kuzma. And that's really for three reasons. One, Bradley Beal, out for the season with the wrist injuries. Don't expect him back. Chris Asporzingis is currently out right now. That's reason number two. We don't know when he's going to be back. And three, who else? Spencer Dinwiddie's no longer there. Montrezl Harrell is no longer there. Kyle Kuzma has been their best player for a lot of this season, especially now that nobody else is really there. You're talking about guys like Kentavious Caldwell Pope and Corey Kispert and Rui Hachimura and Raul Neto on the team. So expect Kyle Kuzma to have high usage, averaging 16 and 9 this season with about three assists per game, 19, 9, and 4 over his last 11. And he is somebody that they're going to be playing through. Even when Chris Asporzingis gets back, expect Kuzma to maybe take a little bit of the hit. And they play similar positions at this point, but they're going to be playing together because, well, Washington doesn't really have any other choice. So those are the guys that I have on post-All-Star break, Breakout Watch. Hopefully they win you a lot of money down the stretch. Take care.